Sean Russell. The news of six is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling you in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. India and Myanmar signed four MOUs. Prime Minister Narendra Modi underscores needs for both countries to actively cooperate to combat terror and insurgent activities. Baloch and Sindhi groups hold anti-China protests in London over China-Pakistan economic corridor in Balochistan. Protesters accuse Pakistan of committing gross human rights violations in the region. Tourism Minister Mahesh Sharma clarifies over Rao over his remarks. On Sunday, he had advised tourists not to wear skirts or go out alone at night to small towns. And a celebration of women power in sports. Olympic stars PV Sindhu, Sakshi Malik, Deepa Karmakar and shooter Jitu Rai conferred the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna at a glittering ceremony at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Our top story this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held extensive talks with the Myanmar President Yu Hidin Kwa in New Delhi today. The two signed four MOUs besides agreeing to step up cooperation in combating insurgency in the region. India also extended support to the new Myanmarese government in ushering an all-round growth and development in the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held wide-ranging talks with Myanmar President Thien Jo on Monday. He assured the visiting dignitary that India will stand by Myanmar to develop as a modern nation. Modi also promised full support to Myanmar's internal peace process. Excellency, your great nation has entered a new era, an era defined by maturity of your leadership and commitment of your people to democracy, and which is accompanied by clear vision and a strong desire of your leadership to make Myanmar a stable and economically prosperous country in the region. Let me assure you that at every step of the way, 1.25 billion people of India will stand by you both as partners and as friends. The two leaders resolved to deepen ties and actively cooperate to combat terrorism and insurgency in the region. We recognize that our security interests are closely aligned and we agreed on the need to remain sensitive to each other's strategic interests and concerns. To this end, President and I agreed to work together for the safety and security of our people and actively cooperate to combat the common challenges of terrorism and insurgent activity in our region. Both sides also inked four MOUs to strengthen cooperation in the areas of connectivity, medicine and renewable energy. The Myanmarese president also assured Prime Minister Modi that his government wants strong relations with India. We thank the government of India, their support to our ongoing reform process and efforts towards achieving peace and national reconciliation. Our two countries have been cooperating within regional and multilateral frameworks such as the East Asia Summit, the BIMSTAC, PSIM, Economic Corridor and the United Nations. Once again, it has been a great pleasure for me to visit India at this juncture and exchange views with leaders of India to further develop our bilateral relations and cooperation in regional and international contexts. Earlier, the Myanmarese president was accorded a ceremonial reception at the Rashtrapati Bhavan.
This is his first overseas visit after assuming office. Tinjo took charge after Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy came to power in March this year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, after 51 days of continuous curfew, the Kashmir Valley is slowly limping back to normalcy. An all-party delegation led by Home Minister Rajnath Singh is expected to visit Jammu and Kashmir next month to interact with various sections of people to find a long-term long solution to the problem. After 51 consecutive days of restrictions, a site Kashmiris were waiting for. Life in the valley limped back to normal as curfew was lifted in most parts barring three police station areas. As traffic returned to the roads, people too stepped out of their homes, albeit tentatively. On Sunday, in his radio program, Man Ki Baat, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about unity and love being the basic mantras for addressing the Kashmir problem. This came a day after he met Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbuba Mufti to discuss the issue. Kashmir ki sthiti ke देश के सभी राजनीतिक दलों ने मिलकर के एक स्वर से कश्मीर की बात रखी दुनिया को भी संदेश दिया अलगाववादी तत्वों को भी संदेश दिया जो लोग इन छोटे-छोटे बालकों को आगे करके कश्मीर में शांति पैदा करने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं कभी न कभी उनको इन निर्दोष बालकों को भी जवाब देना पड़ेगा जिस चीज को मोदी जी ने शुरू किया लाहौर जाके उसके बाद राजनाथ सिंह जी भी गए तो पाकिस्तान को देर सवेर इस चीज की समझ आ जाएगी इस चीज को रियलाइज करेंगे जंगो जदल एक दूसरे को बुरा भला कहना उससे हमारे मसले हल नहीं होंगे एन ऑल पार्टी डेलीगेशन लेड बाय होम मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह इज लाइकली टू विजिट जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑन द 4th ऑफ सितंबर एंड इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू इंटरैक्ट विद अ क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ पीपल However, not all political parties support the steps taken by the BJP-PDP alliance. Pradhan Mantri ka keval bhaavna ke saath apni baat ko jodna kaafi nahi hai. Unko aaj wo kadam uthane padenge jo pehle nahi uthaya gaye aur jisse maha par aman ki bahali honne ka ka pura jisme vishwaas ho aise kadam Pradhan Mantri ko uthane chahi. Kashmiriyat, Insaniyat aur Jamhuriyat वहाँ पे तीनों ही खतरे में अटल जी के पताए रास्ते पर चलना है तो इन तीनों चीज़ों को वापस ला कर के वैली में शांति स्थापित होनी चाहिए जिन्होंने जुर्म जातियाँ की हैं उनको कटघरे में खड़ा करना चाहिए चाहे वो पत्थर फिकवाने वाले हों या निहत्तों पर गोली चलाने वाले Although curfew has been lifted from most parts of the valley, police and security forces remain on high alert. Assembly of 10 or more people continues to be prohibited. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, after controversially suggesting that foreigners visiting India should avoid wearing skirts or going out alone at night, Union Minister Mahesh Sharma today clarified that he was only referring to religious places and that he spoke out of concern. Responding to questions on the government's steps for tourist safety in popular destinations like Agra, Sharma on Sunday listed out some controversial do's and don'ts for visitors to India. These included ter telling tourists not to wear skirts and refrain from going out alone at night in small towns. The culture minister received backlash from leaders across the country. <laughs> एडवाइजरी देना ये दो अलग है सतर्क कहना किसी के लिए कोई गुनाह नहीं है भारत सरकार का मंत्री होने के नाते मेरा ये धर्म फर्ज भी है कि हमारे विदेशियों की और खासतौर पर महिला पर्यटकों की और देशी पर्यटकों की उनकी सुरक्षा का भी हम लोग ध्यान रखें उसके लिए समय समय पर विभिन्न देश भी अपनी एडवाइजरी जारी करते हैं ये उसी का हिस्सा था लेकिन मैंने किसी के पहनावे को मैंने किसी को ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या करें पंडित महेश शर्मा हैज इज वे ही विल पुट एवरी वुमन इन अर्का द कल्चर मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया At times, comes out with the most uncultured remarks possible. इस तरह का बयान आना टूरिज्म मिनिस्टर का कि आप स्कर्ट न पहने आप महिलाओं के कपड़ों पे कोई पाबंदी नहीं लगा सकते और खास करके जो फॉरेनर्स हैं उनका तो ड्रेस को ड्रेस ही यही है आप कैसे उनको क्या साड़ी पहनाएंगे क्या उनको साड़ी पहना के गांव में भेजेंगे? 
Now, the Supreme Court on Monday issued a notice to the Uttar Pradesh government and the Samajwadi Party leader Azam Khan. The notice follows a petition by a minor who was assaulted along with a mother in Bulanshahar. The victims have sought an FIR against Khan and the case will be transferred to Delhi. The Apex Court called Azam Khan's statements objectionable and insensitive. Reacting to the incident, Azam Khan uh, had allegedly accused opposition parties of conspiring to use the gang rape incident to defame the government. The top court said such statements by political leaders create mistrust about the entire system. The incident took place when the family was travelling to Shah Jahanpur to attend a relative's funeral. A gang of high highway robbers sexually assaulted the woman and her daughter after dragging them out of the vehicle. The West Bengal Assembly on Monday passed a resolution to change the name of the state in Bengali to Bengal in English, Hindi and Bangla in Bengali. The government resolution under Rule 169 was passed amid a walkout by the Left Front, the Congress and the BJP. As the opposition parties did not support the resolution, it was passed through voice vote. The new names will require a constitutional amendment to effect the change. Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee called the occasion historic and one that will be remembered in golden letters. In Bengali, uh, the state is currently referred to as Pashimbanga or Pashimbangla. কিন্তু মানুষ কিন্তু বাংলা নামটা অ্যাকসেপ্ট করে নিয়েছে তার কারণ কেউ কিন্তু বলে না আমি বঙ্গ থেকে এসছি কোথায় জিজ্ঞেস করলো লোকের যেটা একটা মানে লোকের মুখে মুখে যে ভাষাটা সেটা হচ্ছে বাংলা থেকে এসছি বেঙ্গল থেকে এসছি এটা কিন্তু সাধারণ মানুষ ইতিমধ্যে ইউজ করছেন অনেক দিন ধরে এবং পরে তাদের সেই ব্যাপারটাকে গুরুত্ব দিয়ে আমরা আজকে এটা করলাম আজকে আমার সবচেয়ে খারাপ লাগছে যেটা বারবার বলা সত্ত্বেও কংগ্রেস সিপিএম বিজেপি এমনকি বাংলার নামকরণটা নিয়েও তারা বিরোধিতা করেছে এটা যদি বিরোধিতা করার জন্যই বিরোধিতা হয় তাহলে এটা খুবই দুর্ভাগ্যজনক এবং দুঃখজনক সামন ন্যাশনাল নিউজ আপডেটস নাও নেশন ওয়াইড Union Minister Prakash Javrekar inaugurated the IIT Dharwar in Karnataka. The institute had started functioning from the 1st of August. It will be mentored by IIT Bombay for the next three years. Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya and Union Minister Anand Kumar were also present for the inauguration. The six rebel Congress MLAs who joined the TMC in Tripura this May have been allowed to keep their membership of the House. However, they will not get the status of the Leader of the Opposition. The Congress expressed disappointment over the decision and described it as politically motivated. Sudeep Rai Burman, Ashish Saha, Bishwabandhu uh, Sen, Deba Chandra uh, Harkangwal, uh, Prasenjit Sangaroy and Dilip Sarkar had resigned from the Congress in protest against the party's alliance with the left parties for the West Bengal Assembly elections. The Supreme Court allowed Asaram Babu to be taken to Ames in New Delhi for medical treatment. The court had earlier rejected his bail petition. However, it asked Ames to constitute a medical board to evaluate his condition. The Ames was asked to submit their report within a period of 10 days. Asaram Babu was arrested in 2013 after a minor girl alleged that Asaram had sexually assaulted her at his ashram in Jodhpur. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. Jewelry has been the pride of the Indian culture. In the Harappan period, it attained perfection in flattened gold bands. From the modern period came the exquisite gold brooches. Many ornaments were an extension of religious practices, like the Gauri Shankaram Rudraksh necklace worn by the temple priest. Rings with lids preserve the tavis that held secret messages and sometimes even poison. Welcome back, you're watching the news at 6. Now, a day after China said that it will be forced to protect its interests in the economic corridor with Pakistan that's coming up in Balochistan, Baloch and Sindhi nationalist leaders jointly protested for the first time against the rights violations outside the Chinese embassy in London. Praising Prime Minister Narendra Modi for speaking up for Balochistan, they sought greater support for their cause from the world community. Freedom! 
UK based Baloch and Sindhi residents holding demonstrations outside the Chinese embassy on Monday. They were protesting against a think tank's remarks that suggested that China could get involved militarily to set up its economic corridor with Pakistan in Balochistan. Baloch or Sindhi Com, uh, is CPEC Nami China Pakistani Com Economic Corridor, Joke Baloch or Sindhi Com, Kekla, Eknai Nasal Kushika Tasal Sul. और बलोच कॉम को अपने ही सरजमीन पर माइनॉरिटी में तब्दील करने का जो नया ड्रामा रचाया जा रहा है उसके खिलाफ इसलिए आए हैं कि हम पाकिस्तान और चाइना को ये बताएं कि वो बलूचिस्तान में बगैर बलोचों के राय बलोचों के सलाह बलोचों के मर्जी के बगैर कुछ भी नहीं कर सकते ना वो इस किसी किस्म के प्रोजेक्ट ना वो किसी किस्म के कॉरिडोर को मुमकिन बना सकते हैं जब तक बलोचों का रजा इसमें ना हो the protesters accused Pakistan of committing gross human rights violations to build the $46 billion corridor. The protests in London follow a similar demonstration in Leipzig, Germany last week. The protesters included groups from both Balochistan and Sindh. Our dirty, our vassal, our coastal lines are the project of the ये हमें मुकम्मल तौर पे अपने मादरी वतन में अकलियत में तब्दील करने का प्रोजेक्ट है जो पाकिस्तान और चाइना इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर है बलोच उसे किसी कीमत पर कबूल नहीं करेगा बगैर बलोच के मंशा और बलोच के रजा के हम चाइना इकोनॉमिक चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर को कभी नहीं मानेंगे चाहे जिसके इसके लिए हमें जितना बड़ा कीमत अदा करना हो the protesting group said they chose the Chinese embassy with the aim of raising wider international support for their cause. We will under no circumstances permit the coming into being of this corridor which will only benefit the Punjab province of Pakistan and in no way benefit the civilians or the local people whatsoever. And the other beneficiary would essentially be China. The protesters waved placards reading hands off Balochistan and Balochistan Zindabad, Pakistan Murdabad and shouted slogans in praise of Prime Minister Narendra Modi who raised the issue in his Independence Day speech earlier this month. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now the Zika virus, which has been linked to a rare birth defect, is spreading across Asian countries. In Singapore alone, 41 cases of locally transmitted Zika virus have been confirmed. The World Health Organization says that it was important for countries to remain vigilant, but it did not know what uh, the level of population immunity is to this lineage of Zika in Asia. Singapore on Monday confirmed that 41 cases of the Zika virus were locally transmitted. Of these, 36 relate to foreign construction workers who lived or worked within the same region of the country. 34 people have fully recovered while 7 are still in hospital. None of the patients were known to have travelled to Zika-affected areas recently. The authorities are monitoring places and said it expected more cases to be identified. All medical services in Singapore have been alerted to be extra vigilant. I think it's pretty worrying because um it just suddenly popped out of nowhere. We suddenly have 41 cases just out of the blue. So I think it's uh, pretty alarming. And uh, I think steps should be taken to actually uh, find out how or why uh, the sudden spread of uh, the Zika virus. Afraid because I've heard like quite a lot about how harmful Zika virus is to like um, girls especially, actually women, pregnant women. So I'm afraid that if this goes on, it might affect. Malaysia has stepped up surveillance at the main transit points with Singapore, handing out leaflets on Zika prevention. In Thailand, around 100 cases of Zika have been recorded across 10 provinces this year. The European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control website has cited Thailand as a red alert country. Vietnam has to date reported three cases of locally transmitted Zika infection. The United States reported 2,517 Zika cases through last week, 29 of which are likely acquired locally in Florida and the rest brought in by travelers. The Zika virus carried by mosquitoes was detected in Brazil last year and has since spread across the Americas. It poses a risk to pregnant women because it can cause severe birth defects. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Summer International News now and Global Buzz. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived in Bangladesh today for a day-long visit. 
He met Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, opposition and civic leaders, to discuss security cooperation after a series of killings by Islamist militants, as well as economic development and human rights. Kerry will visit India as well in his next leg of uh, the tour. The Los Angeles Airport Police today said reports of gunfire in the vicinity were just loud noises. Earlier in a series of tweets, uh, they said they were searching the airport and taking all precautions to ensure the public safety. The departure and arrival levels of the central terminal area were closed during the course of the investigation. Belgium's criminal forensic cell laboratory was set on fire by arsonists early today morning. No casualties were reported in the, in, in the incident. Five people were detained in Brussels and are being questioned over the fire. The institute is linked to the Belgian Ministry of Justice and carries out forensic investigations in criminal cases. At least 60 people were killed and around 29 injured in a suicide car bombing at an army camp in the Yemen city of Aden. According to a report, the attacker drove his vehicle into a gathering of new recruits at the camp. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. The Islamic State also claimed responsibility for a suicide bombing that killed at least 15 people and injured 16 others at a wedding party near Shiat city of Karbala. The five assailants, including the suicide bomber, attacked the party firing machine guns and throwing hand grenades. The bombing is the first in the Karbala region since Iraqi forces dislodged Islamic State militants from their stronghold in Fallujah, 80 kilometers north of the city. Some sports now and Olympic stars PV Sindhu, Sakshi Malik, Deepa Karmakar and Shruta Jitu Rai were today conferred the nation's highest sporting honour, the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna at a gleaming award ceremony at the Rashpati Bhavan. It's for the first time in the history of the National Sports Awards that four athletes have been chosen for the honour. In 2009, three athletes, boxers uh, Vijinder Singh and MC Maricom and wrestler Sushil Kumar were given this award together. It was a celebration of woman power in sports as Olympic stars PV Sindhu, Sakshi Malik and Deepa Karmakar were conferred India's highest sporting honour, the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna, along with shooter Jitu Rai, at a gleaming awards ceremony at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It was for the first time in the history of National Sports Awards that four athletes were chosen for the honour. Shatla Sindhu won a historic silver in the women's singles at Olympics. Sakshi won India's first ever medal in women's wrestling, a bronze, while Deepa grabbed a piece of history for herself with a fourth place finish in artistic gymnastics. It was a dream and it has come true and uh, I've not thought but then uh, I've, I've done it so um, I think uh, Olympics is someone's dream, you know, it's, it's a dream, so everybody's dream, so I've, I've done it, I'm really very happy about it. सबसे पहले तो सरकार को थैंक यू जो उन्होंने मुझे इतना मॉनर किया सुविधाएं तो अभी बढ़ रही हैं लगातार बढ़ती जा रही हैं और आगे अगर हम अच्छा करेंगे तो सुविधाएं और बढ़ती चली जाएंगी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन के लिए बहुत बड़ा ऑनर है तो मैं बहुत खुश हूँ जिन्होंने भी मुझे ये डिसाइड किया देने के लिए थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच और नंदी सर को इस साल द्रोणाचार्य अवार्ड मिल रहा है उसमें बहुत खुशी हो रही है की मुझे और सर को एक साथ मिल रहा है मैं बहुत बहुत खुश हूँ Shooter Jitu Rai was also given the Khel Ratna for his consistent medal-winning performances in the last two years. Although Rai failed to win a medal at Rio, he won several medals in shooting competitions including gold at the Asian and Commonwealth Games and a silver at the World Championships. Thank you for all the support that you have supported. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have done so much work. I have done so much work. मोटिवेशन कर रहा है और इस और मेहनत करूंगा और आगे बढ़ूंगा बिसाइज द खेल रत्न 15 स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन वर अवॉर्डेड दी अर्जुना अवार्ड लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस रनर ललिता बाबर हु फिनिश्ड टेंथ इन द 3000 मीटर स्टीपल चेस एट द रियो गेम्स बॉक्सर शिवा थापा ओनली द थर्ड इंडियन टू विन अ वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप मेडल लास्ट ईयर हॉकी प्लेयर्स वी आर रघुनाथ एंड रानी रामपाल क्रिकेटर अजिंक्य रहाने एंड टीन जावलिन थ्रोअर नीरज चोपड़ा द फर्स्ट इंडियन एथलीट टू विन अ गोल्ड मेडल एट द अंडर ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप वर अमंग दोज हु रिसीव द अवार्ड This year's Dronacharya Award was conferred upon six coaches, the most notable among them being Deepa's coach Bishweshwar Nandi and India's test team captain Virat Kohli's mentor Rajkumar Sharma. Others honoured with the Dronacharya Award were Nagapuri Ramesh for athletics, Sagarmal Dhayal for boxing, Pradeep Kumar for swimming and Mahabir Singh for wrestling. 
The Khel Ratna awardees received a medal, certificate and cash prize of 7.5 lakh rupees each, while the Arjuna awardees received statuettes, certificates and award money of 5 lakh rupees each. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some more sports action now in Sportsbeat. Sanya Mirza and her Romanian teammate Monica Nicolescu received a confidence booster ahead of the US Open as they won the doubles title at the Connecticut Open. The Indo-Romanian duo defeated Katriana Bonadarenko of Ukraine and Chuang Chia Jung of China, Taiwan 7-5-6-4. Barcelona made two wins from their opening two La Liga games as Ivan Rakitic's uh, first half header earned them a victory at Atletico Bilbao. The Croatians scored the only goal of the game in the 21st minute. The win saw Barcelona join rivals Real Madrid and early leaders Las Palmas on six points after two games. Nico Rosberg closed the gap to nine points in the Drivers' World Championship after winning a chaotic crash hit a Belgian Grand Prix. Rosberg, who started from his third successive pole position, led from the start to finish uh, to secure his first uh, victory in Belgium and his sixth of the season. His Mercedes teammate, Lewis Hamilton, who started from the 21st position, also finished on the podium, coming third behind Red Bull's Daniel Ricciardo. Patrick Reed won his first tournament of the season at the Barclays to seal his spot on the USA Ryder Cup team. Overnight leader Ricky Fowler missed out on an automatic Ryder Cup place after carding a three-over round of 74 on Sunday to finish joint seventh. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye.